Like the idea of getting a good deal? Want to buy a stock after it's dropped by 20% or more? Also want safe, growing dividend income while you get that big discount? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, if you want exclusive access to my personal six-figure stock portfolio and alerts on any new investments I make, check out the Patreon link in the description below. The market is off to a rocky start in 2022. Volatility is here. But what do I always say? Short-term volatility is a long-term opportunity. And I think all of this recent volatility has presented some great long-term opportunities. I don't just mean that in terms of the market either. I'm talking about many individual stocks. Because while the S&P 500 is barely off of its all-time high, there are many individual stocks out there that are way down. And you know me, these aren't just random individual stocks. I'm referring to dividend growth stocks paying out reliable rising dividends. Since price and yield are inversely correlated, all else equal, a lower price results in a higher yield. So buying a stock after a big drop increases the yield you get at the time of purchase. And you get to collect that fat growing dividend income while you wait for the stock price to recover. Today, I wanna to tell you about five dividend growth stocks that are down 20% or more from their respective 52 week highs. Ready? Let's dig in. The first dividend growth stock I wanna highlight is Algonquin Power and Utilities Corp, stock ticker AQN. Algonquin is a renewable energy and regulated utility conglomerate with a market cap of $12 billion Canadian. Algonquin is a really interesting utility business and they skirt a lot of issues that tend to plague a lot of legacy utility players. While a lot of major utility companies are pretty landlocked in terms of their geographic service area, Algonquin is spread out all over North America and beyond. So they're not overly dependent on the growth of one particular area in order to grow the revenue base. And whereas many traditional energy generation products are being phased out, Algonquin is already ahead of the curve with significant exposure to renewables. So that's a great one-two punch. And this should allow the company to continue growing the dividend for years to come. The utility company has already increased its dividend for 13 consecutive years. The 10-year dividend growth rate of 9.6% is impressive in and of itself, but it's even more impressive when you see that you're pairing that growth with the stock starting yield of 4.9%. I mean, a near 5% yield and near double-digit dividend growth, that's a rare combination. The company reports results in a funky way for utility, largely because of its unique structure, but adjusted funds from operations are easily covering the dividend, which which is why they increased the dividend by 10% back in May. Despite the big yield and big dividend growth, this stock has been left for dead. The stock is down 22% from its 52 week high. The crazy thing is the stock didn't even look all that expensive at the 52 week high of $17.86. It's just that it's even more appealing now that it's within pennies of its 52 week low, currently priced at right about $14. Indeed, the stock looks attractively valued. That aforementioned 4.9% yield is 60 basis points higher than its five year average. The forward price earnings ratio is below 20. For a normal utility, that's nothing special. However, when you consider the exposure to renewables and water assets, that's actually quite remarkable. Take a look at this name if you haven't already. Next up, let's talk about Bank of South Carolina, stock ticker BKSC. Bank of South Carolina is a local bank company with a market cap of $113 million. There are a lot of small local banks being run all over the United States, and many of them are really fine businesses that have operated spectacularly for decades. There's a good deal of risk when investing in a company with a market cap this small, so one has to be aware of that, but there's also reward to be had, which includes a big dividend growing at a high rate. The bank has increased its dividend for 11 consecutive years. And check this out, the stock yields 3.4%. That's high by any measure. It's high against the market, high against most dividend growth stocks in general, and high against almost any other bank stock. 
But wait, there's more. This bank also routinely declares special dividends, which is on top of that normal 3.4% yield. Also, the 10-year dividend growth rate is a respectable 7.2%. And with a moderate 55.3% payout ratio, the dividend has plenty of room to head higher. This stock is 21% off of its 52-week high, and that could be the opening you need. The bank is trading hands for a bit over $20 a share, which is much lower than the 52-week low of $25.65. Now, this is a small bank. Let's be aware of the risks. But the company has steadily grown its revenue, profit, and dividend for years and years, so they're doing a lot of things right in their community. Meantime, a lot of basic valuation metrics are in line with or slightly lower than the respective recent historical averages. Perhaps surprisingly, this bank has typically commanded a premium. The five-year average price-to-book ratio is 2.2. The current PB ratio is 2.1, so there's a small gap there. Maybe this stock shouldn't have run up to its 52-week high, but it sure looks a lot better down around the $20 a share area. I now want to tell you about Erie Indemnity Company, stock ticker E-R-I-E. -E. Erie Indemnity is a property casualty insurance company with a market cap of nine billion dollars. I've said many times now that insurance is one of my favorite business models. You have a captive customer that often quite literally can't go without the product. And because there's a severe lag between premiums collected and claims paid, insurance companies are able to build up a sizable float and make money from other people's money in a low risk, low cost way. It's ingenious. And this is why many insurance companies are perfectly geared for safe growing dividends. This insurance company has increased its dividend for 32 consecutive years. Like I said, the insurance business model is just geared for this stuff, which as a dividend growth investor is music to my ears. The stock yields 2.3%, which easily beats the market. And the 10 year dividend growth rate is 7.2%, which beats inflation. The one concern here might be the payout ratio at 76%. That's actually pretty high, particularly for an insurance company. Other than that, the dividend metrics are good. This stock is shockingly 28% off of its 52-week high. The 52-week high of $266.77 is in the rear view mirror, with shares currently priced at below $193 each. In my view, this is a case where the drop was warranted. It simply looked expensive at the 52-week high but it's become a lot more reasonable. The PB ratio of 7.8 is decently off of its five-year average of 8.4, and the 2.3% yield is 10 basis points higher than its own five-year average. I'd actually like to see this stock fall a bit more. If it does, that's when there could really be an opportunity. In the meanwhile, it's a name to keep on the radar. The fourth dividend growth stock to talk about is Innovative Industrial Properties, Inc., stock ticker IIPR. Innovative Industrial Properties is a real estate investment trust for the medical use cannabis industry with a market cap of $5 billion. I really like this business. It's a pioneer in the medical use cannabis industry, providing the industry with specialized industrial properties. When you're a pioneer and you're blazing the trail, there's a lot of growth to be had and grown they have, which includes the dividend. The Real Estate Investment Trust has increased its dividend for five consecutive years. This is a fairly new company founded in 2016, so it's not a surprise to see such a young dividend growth track record, but they've got the makings of an all-star dividend growth stock in a lot of ways. The yield of 2.8% is pretty high in this environment, and the three-year dividend growth rate is, get this, an astounding 70.6%. Really, really incredible growth. And because a lot of that dividend growth has been fueled by business growth, the dividend is secure. Their most recent quarter showed 33.6% year-over-year growth in AFFO per share, and AFFO per share for that quarter, Q3 FY 2021, came in at $1.71, easily covering the $1.50 quarterly dividend. This stock's recent weakness with a down 26% from its 52-week high could be a classic long-term opportunity. The stock's current price of right around $213 compares very favorably to its 52-week high of $288.02. Now, this isn't a widows and orphans stock. This is a new player in a new industry. So if you're averse to risk, stay away. But if you're okay with taking on some risk, it's a very, very interesting way to play the burgeoning cannabis industry. The yield easily beats the market and the growth is outstanding. Meanwhile, the valuation after the stunning drop might not be pricing in all of that growth and potential. The price to cash flow ratio of 30.9 is higher than what a lot of stable triple net lease REITs are commanding, where you're usually looking at a ratio of around 20, but those stable REITs are growing at a mid single digit rate. This company is growing almost 10 times as fast. This company is at least worthy of consideration here, if not capital. 
Last but not least, let's have a conversation about Polaris Inc. stock ticker PII. Polaris is a manufacturer of a range of motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles with a market cap of $7 billion. With the pandemic spurring sudden interest in being outdoors, Polaris has been a big beneficiary of this. Trailing 12 months, earnings per share is almost twice as high as what earnings per share for fiscal year 2019 was. Of course, Polaris has long been a great business selling some of the best all-terrain vehicles available in the market. And that's allowed them to build up a fantastic track record for growing dividends. Polaris has increased its dividend for 26 consecutive years. So yeah, this isn't a pandemic story. This is a multi-decade story. The 2.1% yield is pretty good and it beats the market. Plus the 10-year dividend growth rate of 10.8% is strong. However, there has been a market deceleration in dividend growth. The most recent dividend increase was only 1.6%. The good news about the rather conservative dividend growth over the last few years is that it's moderated the payout ratio down to 26.1% after spiking a bit a few years ago. So that sets them up for a nice dividend growth runway moving forward. The stock is 20% off of its 52 week high and that drop has brought the valuation down to a more reasonable level. To be honest, this stock looked expensive at its 52-week high of $147.73, but now at a price of slightly under $118, the stock looks a lot better. Now, I wouldn't say the stock is significantly undervalued or anything like that, but it's reasonable, especially considering the recent tailwind the business has benefited from. They're guiding for $9 in adjusted earnings per share for fiscal year 2021. That puts the forward PE ratio at just over 13. In this market, that's very low. And the sales multiple is also indicating some cheapness. The price to sales ratio of 0.9 is slightly below its own five-year average of 1.0, despite the company arguably being positioned better than ever. Polaris is a star worth looking at. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and let us know in the comments what you think about these five dividend growth stocks that are down 20% or more from their respective 52 week highs. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six figure portfolio, which I call the fire fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early thirties. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon. And I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.